welcome to Cherry Ridge just outside Honestell. I'm at a garden that is full of perennials. This is Diane Fox and she is going to tell us what she's doing with her wonderful perennials. I like variety and I also like that as one flower goes down, another one comes up so that I constantly have something coming into bloom. So this garden looks completely different in the spring? Completely different. Early Come summer? On. Different. Midsummer? Different. And then it's fall? Fall. Different. Fall it gets a little dicey, there's not much going on then. Okay, but so that's something to work on later on. on. Certainly you've got a very full planting here. Why don't we start at the end here and pick out maybe four or five perennials that you really love? Well, the first plant I I always love is this. Uh, it's a gooseneck loosestrife, Lysomachia clethroides, if you want the Latin name on it all. But it's a cool plant. Yes, it is. It gathers butterflies like crazy. It's a little bit of a thug, this one, because it does spread. Yes. And the best way to deal with a thug is to put another one next to it. So the monada, the bee balm here, yes, can, can stop it from spreading, spreading all over on. and taking it all mm -hmm. over. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. Well, this certainly catches my eye now. This is Lady Bells. And it's looking wonderful. Could be a campanula from a distance, but I, I know it quite well because it's a very underused perennial and you've certainly got a lovely drift of it here. Okay. Now, big question. For a lot of beginners, they plant a lot of perennials in their yard and lo and behold, by the next morning, the deer have come along and chomped a lot of them down. I have How a, do you deal with it? I have a special mix that was given to me by a landscaper and it consists of eggs, sour milk, water and garlic powder. And the stinkier or the, <laughs> the better it is. Sour it is, the better so it is. You put it in a blender or something like yes, that? Yes, I blend the, the eggs and the milk and yep. then I mix it, put it in with the water and the garlic and let it sit and get Sit snappy. for how long? You know, two Longer weeks? the better. Longer the better. <laughs> and how do you apply? Doesn't it curdle up a bit and have lumpy bits? No, it, when I was first doing it, yes, but I've learned that if I blend it and have the milk a little bit more sour to start yep. with and blend the, the egg and the milk, it stays better. Gotcha. Yeah. And you spray it by hand spray? Ah, yes. Little hand spray? Yes. It, and that seems to have done a fantastic job. Yes, it has. Excellent, excellent. Yes. Right in the front here, this is a rose campion. Mm -hmm. Beautiful plant. Um, it can grow in very tough conditions and it spreads like wildfire. Yes. But it looks pretty amazing in your yard. And it is, I think, completely deer proof. Anything typically with a silver foliage, lamb's ears, um, mm -hmm. rose coronaria, uh, the deer tend not to like. I don't know why, maybe it's the furry nature of it. But it's easy to grow? Easy to grow. I know I mentioned that we're going to be talking about perennials, but in mm -hmm. terms of coming back every year, there are some annuals that That's will seed themselves. And this is a fine example. example. Yes, it Tell is. Tell us about it. Um, it kind of is in pod right now. I leave it go and the pods will dry out and then they just, seeds go everywhere. Gotcha. I love your yeah. little ponder. Yeah. And some the liatris, the um, gay feather behind it, it's got a lot of bee activity on yes. it. Yes, yes. There's one plant I saw over here early on, which we must go and have a look at because for some people it's very difficult to grow and you obviously have no problem growing it. Well, this is the little chap I'm talking about. Some of you are gonna recognize it straight away because the leaf it's almost like a clover leaf with a little bit more ornamentation at the end. It's a, a columbine or aquilegia. These are phenomenally interesting flowers in the spring. But what amazes me here is, is that Diane has got it spreading everywhere without any real effort. She's letting the seed heads like this. This is a seed and it's full of seed and it's falling out by itself and the little babies coming up everywhere. So a wonderful plant and uh, I think well worth trying in full sun. I've always put it in partial shade, but maybe I'm making a mistake. I have to say, Diane, this is a marvelous example of what a cone flower should look like. Isn't that beautiful? Thank you, yes. And you've decorated nicely with the birdhouses. Mm -hmm. Now, the problem is on the market now, there are so many cone flowers available. And I have to tell you, probably 80% of them don't come back like this. The good old fashioned purple cone flower, you can't mm -hmm. beat. And here's, here's why, look what it does year after year. It's bigger and bigger. Yes, which is good, that's a good sign. <laughs> <laughs> this is an amazing grass that is often overlooked because of its habit and its habit is it doesn't mind dry conditions and it spreads very aggressively. You never have to walk it. It's called blue lime grass and it looks fantastic next to this kind of a bluey gray rock. Isn't it? Very, very nice. Well, here's a very neat landscape feature. Typically when people have a road and lawn next to it, they're worried about cars making ruts in it, parking yes. in it, doing all kinds of things. And they often put large stones to kind of ward off it. You've done that, but yeah. you've added a little bit extra, yeah? Yes. 
I've added the perennials. Perennials everywhere, and they're doing beautifully. <laughs> On the lawn, the biggest problem I always find with perennial beds is that the grass wants to migrate in. Mm -hmm. So how do you stop that? I use a uh, mix of vinegar and water. Um, the vinegar is not your typical on the grocery shelf. It is six times powerful and you can get it in like a Home Depot, Lowe's, any garden center I would assume would have it, but it, it plainly says six times. It's stronger and it'd stronger. be what, in the cleaning section or something yes, like that? Yes, yeah. So yes. that's it, strong and vinegar and, and you dilute it down, down and you eventually mm -hmm. work out what dilution will do the job and it's certainly done the job here. Yes. Finished it off. You have to kind of experiment with it. So how did you get these rocks here? One of those backhoe things. Yep. These rocks were here on this property and we just kind of moved them to where we wanted them. Way back in the day, this was a wooded lot. Yep. And it had a lot of stuff in it and some we saved and recycled yep. and others is gone. But and the rocks still, were part of it, yeah. Still got the moss growing on it, especially here on the way from the sun. sun. Yes. Looks very nice. I tell you, you, rather than just a sort of like keep out of my yard kind of look, it's got yes. a very friendly one. Very but friendly. don't, for goodness sake, drive onto it because you get yes. an unpleasant surprise. Yeah. Well, Diane, it's been an absolute pleasure to visit your garden. You've done some wonderful things. We've learned some wonderful tips about how to look after a perennial garden. So thank you very much. Thank you for coming.